you know, Advocate Center and uh, not knowing even what the lineup is going to look like. Uh, you know, somebody's uh, COVID positive, somebody, you know, just tweaked the knee, somebody's, somebody's out. So for Billy and his staff and the way what they had to deal with and our performance staff was wonderful too. Uh, this gym was just, you know, every day busy um, with our player development guys, uh, you know, try to keep uh, guys that are, you know, low minute run, you know, to keep those guys in shape, our performance staff working with the guys that are working back from injuries. So it's been a very challenging year. Um, I would say there were a lot of uh, good moments in the first half of the season, and we were really happy, um, you know, ended up with DeMar and Zach uh, playing the All-Star game. And however, you know, it's, it's been up and down season, uh, not the way we wanted to finish. Um, but there's a lot of positives. Uh, and, you know, I thought that first game and second game against Milwaukee were exactly how we wanted to go. Um, I think three and four, exactly how we didn't want to go. Uh, especially coming back to United Center after five years um, uh, in the playoffs. Um, and again, I want to also to thank our fan base um, coming back to that building. And it's just, uh, it, it was special to watch them, uh, the passion in that building. And it's, I hate to disappoint them every night. Um, and even when we would went on a road, sometimes we would feel like we're playing in, you know, in, in Chicago. So the, the support that we had from fans, um, it was amazing. So I really enjoyed this year in terms of experience. Um, uh, not the way we want to finish, um, but we got back to postseason. Uh, and we have time now to figure it out, what we're going to do in the summer. Um, I hope for continuity um, because we constantly competing against teams that have been together for three, four, five years. Uh, and, you know, results come as, you know, obviously when you keep the same group longer. So we'll, we'll figure it out what additions we need. You know, is that shooting, is that defense, is that size, athleticism. So we're going to sit down and um, figure it out with the group. What was your view on how Zach played this year? He's obviously playing through some some knee discomfort, and you know he's a guy up for a pretty big deal. I'll tell you what. I mean, second year, he's an All Star. Um, I think he's been great for obviously until he was injured and uh, what he had to go through uh, second part of the season. You know, we we definitely appreciate him being in and battling in every game and. You know, he's he's another one that is going to, you know, uh, see doctors and, you know, going to get healthy. Um, but I thought I enjoyed, again, the second year with uh, with Zach, two years, two years in a row being an all-star and just getting to know him and working with him. Uh, he has great relationship with Billy. Um, he has great support system here with our coaching staff and front office. So I, you know, I hope he's here you know, for a long time. So. How will you approach his uh, unrestricted free agency? Uh, sorry? How will you approach his unrestricted free agency? Uh, the thing is that, that we have a relationship with him. He knows exactly what to expect here. And, you know, we have a really good relationship with him. Um, you know, he's been, you know, last two years been best years of his career. Uh, so we'll see what happens. But factor in at all in your no, discussions? No, I don't think so. You're no. pretty sure long term, no problem? No. Not that I know, but uh, but again, in a short time, we're going to figure it out what's this uh, uh, plan for the summer. So. Arthur, is it your, even is your understanding that he's going to need surgery? I don't know yet, so I'm not going to speculate. But. Even on the, you know, hoping for continuity, there are changes that you guys are going to have to make. You've invested a lot of future draft capital through trades to, to bring guys in. Are you comfortable with where your guys' draft pick future situation is right now? And will you, you guys explore, you know, potentially moving more of that? Or do you want to kind of stick with what you have? We're going to explore everything. You know, I, you know, we had a pretty busy summer last, last summer. Um, 
and a lot of things you still cannot uh, project going into uh, draft or free agency. Um, you know, the way I allow things to settle, you know, for the draft is like you, pre you get a better feel a week or two uh, weeks before the draft because you're going through, you know, workouts and interviews and, you know, and you get a better feel. And then obviously the, the prep for free agency is going on at the same time. So once it gets closer, you probably have a better idea. But right now it's very hard to say, you know, in terms of what kind of opportunities we're going to have. And Chris, is it a goal of you guys to be able to use the non-taxpayer middle-level exception uh, I don't think it's a goal. I think it, you just have to, you know, have a plan uh, and, you know, al alternatives uh, for every situation. And that's what we had last last summer, and that's what we're going to have now. We're going to be uh, prepared for anything that happens, and, uh, yeah, we'll deal with it. Jason, two prominent players that are extension eligible this offseason, Vooch and Kobe, how do you – plan, maybe take them one at a time, but how do you plan to approach those guys' extension eligibility? Again, we're going to spend time as a group because now we, all focus was on the season. Uh, there's going to be uh, more focus right now on the, on the draft, and once we get to it, you know, we're going to have, you know, meet up with the group, and we're going to make decisions. One of the first things you did was expand the player development staff here. Mm -hmm. With that in mind, do you want guys in here this summer working with those guys? Well, absolutely. We're going to have, you know, we have this building is always going to be open for them. Um, we're going to keep in touch uh, all summer long uh, because it's, it's, it's vital for our group um, to develop uh, this summer, to take a next step. Um, besides the players that are already here and the vet veteran players, you know, the young players need to uh, also work on their game. So we're going to stay in touch. Our you know, staff is going to be in this building, so it's a, it's a huge summer for us. Jamar said he's also going to have people out there in LA. Do you, Billy's you know really ha happy about that? What do you think about that leadership? Yeah, I mean, I, I love that that they all all going to communicate during the summer. Um, you know, and they're going to work out during uh, off season. So um, I definitely, you know, I would definitely in their situation explore, although. You know, we don't have much to say in, in the offseason uh, as executives or as organizations. Kind of following up on the offseason thing, though, talk about injuries. Obviously, the hope is COVID won't be as prevalent in years to come in terms of Hopefully, yeah. aff affecting guys' availability. But from an injury perspective, you got Lonzo has a history with the knee. Zach has a history with the knee. Caruso, you know, has these bumps and bruises that accrue. Are you concerned that banking on future, you know, availability with this group that there is a concern that it's, it's going to be tough for these guys all to stay healthy over the course of a full season? Or do you think in the off season guys can work towards being more durable? You know, I'm hoping for durability. I'm a positive guy. Um, we're going to look at everything and I'm going to try to get them healthy this summer, um, leading to the training camp. Um, you know, I, I thought that this group of players was really, really good during the season. Uh, resilient group, um, next in line mentality. Uh, nobody complained uh, when the guy would come back and he would lose his minutes. Uh, they w they were really supportive. So I really enjoyed this year working with this group. Um, again, what well, they had to go through in December and January on a daily basis. Um, so. I mean, I expect them to be healthy, um, and that's, you know, but again, any additions that we're going to make to the roster, um, again, it's, it's more towards, you know, versatility and being flexible because the, the, the season is long, um, and you have a good, you got to have to have a good quality of uh, roster for your flexibility. Watching the Bucks series, how far away do you think you are from being a true contender for a championship? Well, it's a roller coaster, right? So after you know we went one-one, I thought you know I was really positive coming back into this building, and then you know we were humbled in game three and four, and then five is obviously losing uh, Alex and uh, Zach um, impacted 
you know, we're, I thought we competed in the first game, uh, but both teams didn't make shots. Uh, second game, both teams made shots and we were resilient in that game. And uh, three and four, they made adjustments in terms of, uh, they just packed the paint and we just couldn't make a shot. And f fifth game, we actually shot almost 53s and um, again, it's, it's a make or miss league and that didn't work for us. But uh, we've got a lot of work to do. Uh, I understand that um, this roster is uh, just a one year old. Uh, I think besides their age, it's, I think it's playing together uh, for a longer period of time is gonna contribute to uh, familiarity and feeling more comfortable uh, in tough situations. What did you think of the season uh, uh, Vucevic had? He was one of our most durable players. And I think uh, if you think about the rotations, uh, you know, guards going in and out, wings going in and out, I think he would have been probably the hardest guy to replace. Uh, but he stayed available, and he, he's been a vital part of what we run on offense and all year long just being available he's been great for us so you, you mentioned the word continuity once today you, you also said at the trade deadline that's all we heard about from the players and billy the, the last few days but you've also been a very aggressive front office so where do you strike that balance like do you work the margins to try to improve your depth i mean what where do you kind of i'm going to look at everything you know and uh, billy's going to be involved in all of that um that's why I enjoyed that relationship with Billy and his staff. And, you know, we, we spend so much time talking about games, talking about player development, talking about, you know, um, you know, how we, you know, play in the first half of the season, second half of the season. So those conversations are ongoing all the time and he's going to be involved in, in our process. So, uh, do you think you need to improve your depth though? I mean, cause when we, when we hear continuity, we read that you're going to keep the core. Yeah, whether that's right or wrong, that's how you know us morons read. My it. expectations are those, but again, like you know, we we've, we've always been um, ready for you know what comes our way. Um, so hopefully we can keep the the core together, and uh, again, like you said, you know, work around the margins. You know, you come up with those phrases. Uh, but you know we're gonna look in free agency and see what what else we need. Uh, well, what do we need to add? Uh, we're gonna be in the you know in the draft picking at 18. We still have you know Portland's pick, um, so we have a couple assets and we'll see what happens. Obviously, players talk to each other a lot, uh, and Demar said the other day he would be willing to you know talk to players that might want to come to Chicago. Would you welcome uh, your players? Uh, Talking to other players? Well, I was pleasantly surprised last summer uh, how many people wanted to play in Chicago. Um, just uh, the history of this franchise and the city of Chicago. And I think anybody that, you know, step into uh, United Center, I think they feel the energy and passion. And um, talking to a lot of people, it's, you know, they agree that it's, it's great that. Uh, postseason came back to that building. So I think a lot of people want to play in Chicago, and I think uh, Billy is a huge part of it. Um, and stability in terms of, you know, from our, you know, we doing our part as well as a front office and our relationships uh, with players, current players, um, you know, that they talk and um, just trying to be ourselves and. Um, you know, Chicago is going to be always a uh, great destination for any players and free agents. Sorry, first, to get a sense of what you have in Patrick and what do you really hope he does this summer, improving off the last few games against Milwaukee and just the amount of time he missed? Yeah, I think uh, there were a lot of positives with Patrick. Um, he's been out for five months and then came back, and it took him a while to just get a feel. Um, you know, with him, uh, when somebody's asking me like what he needs to improve, I, I think he uh, his skill set is pretty complete. Um, what he can do athletically, there's not a lot of players can do in our league. I just think the biggest thing for him is experience and uh, confidence. Um, we're always going to ask him to be more aggressive. 
Um, and like I said, you know, his adjustment from game three to four and five, I think were great. And it's, you know, hard to think that he's 20 years old and make, making those adjustments playing against the world champions. So that's going to serve him well um, as experience. And he's going to come back better next, next summer. I mean, uh, next year, he has a huge summer in front of him. Um, he's committed. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Are you going to go to Zoom? I am going to do the question. I have another question. Okay. You mentioned uh, the, the, the pick at 18 this year and then the Portland pick. Are you at a sit point now where you've obviously expended a lot of draft capital to, to assemble the roster you currently have? Are you at a point now where you almost need to hold on to what draft picks you have left? Or are you still, if the right opportunity comes, you're still comfortable burning? Again, you look at the 18 pick, you know, depends who, who gets there, if you like them or not. You know, I think I think there's going to be players that we like, um, and then you know there's different options. You know, if there's a player that we like, um, so we're going to look at everything. Uh, obviously, you know, a lot of capital was you know put this team together, but you know there were a ton of great things and positive things this year. Um, I mean, in order to bring players, that's what you got to do. Um, so, but we're going to be flexible, like you described. You know, front office is pretty aggressive, so we're going to look at everything. So, just, just one more. Could you could you assess overall your impression of Demar Derozan's season? Great. Um, no, with Demar has been has been fantastic as a as a vet, as a pro. Uh, his approach, uh, rubbing off on a lot of uh, players that never been in the playoffs and just coming up you know guys like Io who started 40 games for us which uh, obviously we didn't have any expectations in September so just for those guys just to watch him every day I think it's 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 valuable and he he has done unbelievable job this year Mark knew him pretty well you probably didn't know him as well did you expect him to have as much of an off-the-court impact as he did throughout the organization? Well, you know, we, we know DeMar pretty well. Um, you know, the expectations were, you know, pretty high. Um, um, but I think he, he had one of his best uh, years in his career. I mean, the games that he he had, you know, there were so many. Um, and he just impacts the guys around him. I think uh, first half of the season, him playing with Zach and uh, those guys is so good, you know, for a reason. Obviously, they were both all stars. So uh, again, you know, this off season is going to be about getting healthy, regroup, uh, try to improve, and come back in training camp better. You good? Yeah. We're going to move to Zoom, Arturis. Joe Cowley, go ahead. Arturis, how you doing? How are you, Joe? Good. Hey, um, you brought up uh, continuity and, and, you know, the teams that you're competing against, you know, been together, whether it's three to five years or, or however long it is. At the same time, those teams you guys are competing against, even when you look at the final four that's left in the East, their headliners are two-way players. When you look at your roster, it's almost like the core is what it is, but it has to be supplemented by guys that can, like a Caruso, that can be defensive specialists. And, and Lonzo Ball arguably is probably your best two-way player. Is the is does that make your life harder that you have to supplement and bring in certain pieces that make this thing work better than than maybe some other teams do? It just seems like sometimes you guys are just playing one handed and the roster is kind of built that way. Well, the you know the small sample that we had in the beginning of the season I thought was pretty good. Um, we understand our you know roster, um, you know and any shortcomings but uh, I think it's also you know again long season lots of lineups it's very hard to find your identity defensively uh, when the guys are constantly changing so and and we had very hard time especially in the second half uh, with that when our defense dropped to the 20s so there's there's definitely a lot of room to improve uh, because I think in order for us to compete, we've got to be both. I, I mean, we've got to be top 10 in both, in offense and defense. So 
we'll we'll try to figure it out how to get there. But uh, additional year of playing together because this is a new group. You're constantly seeing every game out there with different lineups. Is how they're trying to figure it out how to play with each other. So I think uh, another year under the belt will will serve them well. Thanks, Arthur. Yep. Jamal, go ahead. Hey, what's up, man? I hope you can hear me okay. My Wi-Fi is not great in here. Yes. Uh, but I, I got two questions for you. Uh, the first is about Kobe. Um, he shot a career high from three and, you know, sort of making some tries during the season, but really struggling in the playoffs. And just kind of in general, kind of what do you make of his season? Which of those two things, like, do you sort of weigh in more? Like, how, how do you just, what do you make of the season he had overall? Well, I see a lot of growth in Kobe's year. Uh, because he's never been in these situations, um, he's been, you know, he's been very good. Um, whatever Billy was asking him, sometimes he would start, sometimes he's come off the bench. Uh, he's never been in the playoffs, so that was new for him. Uh, uh, just emotionally, how to control emotions. Uh, so it's a learning experience for him, um, you know, to knock down shots and, you know, how to, you know. How to play with constantly changing uh, roster um, in terms of lineups. Um, so I, th I thought I thought it was positive for Kobe. Um, he will admit. I mean, he came in obviously um, during the season. Uh, it took him some time to get a to get it going, but I thought he had uh, huge strides. And uh, again, his uh, th 38 and a half percent from the three. It's 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 pretty good. So. There's a lot of positive yeah, that's in, so cool. in this season. Uh, and my second question is just, uh, you know, the season obviously didn't end the way you wanted. I mean, it ended earlier in the playoffs than you wanted. But uh, some of the stuff you mentioned about, like, players being excited about wanting to play in Chicago or the building getting playoff basketball back. Um, I'm just kind of wondering, like, what kind of value do you see in a year uh, like this? Do you still consider it a success of, like, getting those, uh, you know, those positives back, I guess, like, I don't know how I'm wording this correctly, but um, like even a year that you don't necessarily reach a, a goal like this, but you get the team back to the playoffs, get people excited about it, do you still think there's value in that and it makes it a success if you didn't reach your ultimate goal? There's value for sure to get back to the postseason, five, you know, first time in five years. Uh, again, uh, it's it's a new team. I mean, they, they were together since uh, October. So I think it's it's still forming. Uh, this group is forming. So they're going to have uh, another summer, and then you know, leading into the training camp, there's going to be uh, you know definitely improvements being together for a longer time. Because again, you playing you know against uh, Milwaukee, against Philly, against uh, Boston, against Miami, they've been together for a long time. So. Continuity is valuable, and and this experience from playing together with for seven months for them, it's 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 going to be a good experience. One more from Cody. Go ahead, Cody. Uh, Mark Evers has maybe been speculated a little bit for open pops before. Seems mm -hmm. like you're already laughing here, chuckling. Um, but if he's if someone reaches out, what will your guys' response? How will you handle that? And do you expect him to be back as GM next year, or do you expect a lot of interest for him? Elsewhere? He's I mean, he's amazing executive. Um, you know, when those opportunities would present themselves, I'm sure he's going to look at it. But he's done an unbelievable job here. Um, it's been great working with him. Um, I'm looking forward to build this team, you know, together with him uh, this summer. You know, and whatever comes, comes. But again, it's been a pleasure the last two years working with him. Thanks, Arturs. Thank you.